When you work on a machine learning task, regardless whether it is classification or regression, what you usually do is you build an architecture, then you train it on some data, and then once you are quite confident with it, what you do is you start getting the most out of it. And basically what you do is you just start tweaking different parameters to see what are the ones that provide the best result. Now, this is a process that m many people actually do manually, but it takes a very, very long time. In this video, I want to talk to you about a hyperparameter optimization. That's a technique that's completely automated and it's going to allow you to get the best out of your models. Specifically, I'm going to define what hyperparameter or per optimization is, what are like the different techniques that you can use, and I'm also going to share a few like pro tips on how you can do it like the best way possible. First of all, we have to understand the difference between parameters and hyperparameters in machine learning models. When we talk about parameters, we talk about all of those values that get updated during training. In other words, here we're referring to weights and biases, and we know that at each training cycle, these values tend to get changed through the training process. By contrast, when we talk about hyperparameters, we refer to all of those values that we need to, to configure before the start of the training cycle and that do not get updated at training time. A few examples of hyperparameters are the learning rate, the batch size, or the regularization values that we use. In hyperparameter optimization, there's an algorithm that tries to identify the hyperparameter configuration that provides the best results. The algorithm does that by running many training experiments in parallel with slightly different hyperparameter configurations and then trying to find like, the best um, set of values for the hyperparameters. This approach is great for so many reasons, but mainly because it saves you so much time. The whole searching process is done automatically and it's done in a way better manner that you could ever do manually. So yeah, this is like a great thing that you can use to squeeze the most out of your uh, algorithms. There are different techniques or algorithms to perform hyperparameter optimization. The difference between them is the sort of strategy that they use to come up with the different configurations. Let's take a look at the three most used ones. Here we have grid search, random search and Bayesian optimization. Grid search is really, really straightforward. The idea here is that you provide a range of values for each of the different hyperparameters that you want to optimize, and the algorithm just tries out all the possible combinations and identifies the one combination that works the best. Of course, this is a brute force approach. It has the advantage that it tries out all the possibilities, but it has the disadvantage that it's quite, quite slow because it has to go through all the different possibilities. I suggest to use this approach if you have a search space or a hyperparameter space, which is like quite uh, limited. And if you already know the, a sort of like range of values that tend to work like quite well, and you are just in search to get really the best out of a range of parameters that you know work already well. The second approach is random search. In this case, the algorithm starts with a configuration and then it moves randomly within the hyperparameter search space. In other words, uh, from one training uh, run to like the, the next training run, it just like changes a few values uh, randomly. The great advantage about this is that uh, the algorithm is capable of like discovering quite a lot of like the space and coming up like with interesting like values that probably you've never like thought of. Sort of disadvantage here is once again that the whole process is quite slow because obviously we have like a uh, model like that or an algorithm that moves within the hyperparameter space without a heuristic and so it's going to take like a very long time until like you find something useful. I highly suggest to use this approach if you have really no idea about like the value of your hyperparameters and you want to try out like a few like different things like completely crazy things. So you do go like for the random search approach. The third strategy is Bayesian optimization. This approach uses Bayesian statistics. Oh, what a surprise, right? But 
Uh, I'm not gonna get into details here because like the, the whole process is quite convoluted But if you want to learn more about this do let me know in the comment section below and I'll just get into the, the details But for now you just need to know that Bayesian optimization It's the sort of state-of-the-art that it's utilized in the industry for performing hyperparameter optimization so this is really a strong uh, candidate for like, the hyperparameter uh, optimization that you want to run like with your ex experiments. There are two ways you can implement hyperparameter optimization. One is basically building all the code for hyperparameter optimization by yourself, so custom code. The other one is using libraries. Well, both of these are valid. Definitely use the first one, so basically build everything from scratch if you are sort of like starting with hyperparameter optimization because that is gonna give you like a really good understanding of how like the whole thing works. But if you just want to like work on something like in a very efficient manner, you don't need to reinvent the wheel because out there there are a lot of very good Python libraries that you can uh, leverage for just running hyperparameter optimization. Here I have a couple of suggestions for you. One is called Keras Tuner. So this is a very good optimization um, like library that you can use. Obviously it's tied with TensorFlow and Keras, but I do believe that you can also use it for other frameworks. The great thing is that this library has a lot of types of algorithms that you can use for running optimization, and it's very, very simple to use. The other optimization framework that I suggest is Optuna. This is an open source Python library. I use it all the time. It works with any type of framework, could be PyTorch, could be TensorFlow, could be Scikit-Learn, works really well. And it has all you need to get started with hyperparameter optimization. I'm sure you'll have a lot of questions about how to actually run hyperparameter optimization optimally. Well, let me share a few tricks here. First of all, don't work on the whole data set you have, but just focus on a small subset of it. At the end of the day, when you run hyperparameter optimization, you don't want to get like the best model, but rather you want to see how your model performs with different configurations. So you're really interested in the differences. So don't use all of your data set, but just like your subset. The advantage of this is that, of course, the whole process is gonna speed up quite a lot. A second piece of advice would be to use a small subset of the whole search space. Do limit your search space. This, again, is gonna speed up like the whole thing. So if you already have an idea of the different para hyperparameters that you want to try out, just like focus on those like first and then add other things like if those are not enough. Of course, like you may be wondering now, but what are like the different hyperparameters that I should optimize? Well, this really depends on each use case, on each task, but there are a few usual suspects, right? And these are the learning rate, the batch size, and the regularization bias. You may be wondering, but what are other hyperparameters that I can optimize or that I should optimize? Well, unfortunately, this is really use case specific. So my advice here would be that of going out in the academic literature just like searching for like your task and how like researchers have tackled your task and there try to see what hyperparameters researchers have tried to optimize. Perhaps those are the ones that you should try first. Then uh, another like possibility you have here is just like to take a look at the different um, libraries and APIs available for your use case. And there perhaps like out of like those parameters that you have available in the libraries, you'll identify a few hyperparameters that you do want to optimize. So to give you like a simple example, if you are like an audio processing, any type of audio processing task, you may be uh, dealing rather than with the original waveform in the time domain with its uh, sort of like counterpart in time frequency domain, so a spectrogram. Now, to move from waveform to spectrogram, you need a short time Fourier transform. And there, there are a bunch of different parameters, like for example, hop size or like frame size, right? So you could actually think of using like hop size and frame size as hyperparameters that you want to um, optimize during hyperparameter training. So yeah, that's just like a simple like example, but you get the idea. And here you have an introduction to hyperparameter optimization. As, you, as we saw during this video, you can use this technique to get the most out of your model once you are confident with a certain architecture and in the process save you a lot of time and hassle. 
Now, if you want me to go more into detail, perhaps like implementing some of these techniques using some of the libraries like Harris Tuner or Optuna, just do let me know down in the comments below. So that's all for today. I hope you found this useful. I'll see you next time. Take care.